Merry Christmas. Uh, as it says in the Psalms, sing and make melody to the Lord. So let's sing together. We're going to sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Christ by highest heaven adored Christ the everlasting Lord Late in time behold him come Offspring of the virgin's womb Veiled in flesh the Godhead see Hail the incarnate deity Pleased as man with men to dwell Jesus our Emmanuel Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace Hail the Son of Righteousness Light and life to all he brings Risen with healing in his wings Mild he lays his glory by Born that man no more may die Born to raise the sons of earth Born to give them second birth Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Bob. Good Merry Christmas, Brad, and everyone. Uh, we're, we're glad that you've joined us for Christmas morning. I hope you're having a good time opening presents and spending time with family. Um, as we begin this morning, we're going to read the Nicene Creed together. Um, the Nicene Creed was uh, a, a summary of a doctrinal statement that tells us about who Jesus was and what he came to do, that he was not merely a man, but he was God in the flesh. He was not created by God. He's eternally existed, and he was born into humanity for our sake. Mm. So would you join with me in reading the Nicene Creed? And this is really what Christmas is all about, the God of the universe joining us in our humanity. Mm. Christian, what do you believe? We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father, before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. 
and we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 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 Well, we've been in Isaiah. What a wonderful book. And there's actually only a few direct, explicit promises and predictions about the Messiah, but they seem to be the favorite ones in the birth narratives. Ones in chapter 7, Emmanuel, ones in chapter 11 about the branch, one in 16 and one in 32. The one I'm going to pick is in chapter 9, verse 6, and it begins, For unto us a child is given. The best-known engagement with Isaiah's Messianic texts in Western society uh, all happened because in about June 1741, right at the beginning of the Great Awakening, a man named Charles Jennings sent lyrics for an opera to George Handel in London, a Lutheran. And he just spent 24 days taking these lyrics and making them into a beautiful opera we know as Handel's Messiah. And the lyrics are just scriptural quotations, many of them from Isaiah. He remarkably intersects the promises of God to bring comfort, we looked at Isaiah 40, with the promise of the virgin birth, Isaiah 7, and the Names of the royal Messiah, we'll look at here in Isaiah 9, verse 6. And then he moves to the suffering servant, which we all know is Isaiah 53. During this time, though, 1740s deism was really popular, and they did not like predictive Old Testament prophecy. They did not want to get too personal about God, and they weren't into particular miracles. And so, the Messiah, Handel's Messiah, drew boldly on predictive prophecy, personal deity, and miraculous birth. And so since 1741, we have this permanently fixed in Western culture, and I'm thankful. But listen to this verse as I read it uh, from Isaiah 9-6. Maybe you know Handel's Messiah. For unto us... A child is born, a, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Now, when you have birth announcements, usually it says, uh, Brad's had a lot of birth announcements, I think, maybe his uh, youngest Greta born to Brad and Jessica Liss might be what the announcement said. But notice in this verse, it wasn't born to Joseph and Mary, but born to us. So Christ's birth is announced. And what kind of child is this? For to us, a child is born and given. And it says, um, the mighty God, he'll be called mighty God. So why was this a comfort? In this context, King Ahaz in the north of Israel made an alliance with human power, namely Assyria, and that led to thick darkness and gloom. And Assyria came and attacked by the Sea of Galilee, and so they said there was thick darkness there as Assyria came in. And Matthew 4 picks up on Isaiah because here Isaiah prophesies that on the Sea of Galilee, the people who walked in darkness will see a great light. And that is that in the very place where Assyria came and took them into captivity is the very place where divine weakness will come and lead us into freedom. So that's a wonderful connection. And I just want to say that here we have a child who's called the mighty God, and that all the birth narratives uh, have a power encounter. They have a power encounter with human power and divine weakness. 
and this divine weakness will triumph over all earthly powers and all demonic powers. What are his titles? Wonderful counselor. I would love, Brad, to be, you know, to just have a wonderful counselor at my beck and call whenever I want and not have to pay or call or set up an appointment. He's called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. We mentioned that. He's a generous, uh, loving father forever. And shalom is the best we all long for. That's where we're headed to in heaven, rest. And so this divine weakness is the fundamental message of Christmas. And it's spreading all over the world, third world and China. And uh, someone asked Tim Keller, why? Why is this message spreading in the third world and all over? And he said, it is this wonderful foolishness, this God in a manger, this poor carpenter, this God uh, whose arms are stretched out, dying on the cross, life ebbing out in sacrifice for you. That's a beautiful message. And that's the power. Divine weakness is the fundamental, fundamental message of Christmas. So just a few applications. Um, since God embraced human weakness, why can't we? So uh, I think of Hudson Taylor, great missionary, said, all God's giants have been weak. Think of Gideon, who's actually mentioned in Isaiah 9. Um, also, second application is just since our dependence on God's power is the aim, then owning our weakness ought to be uh, very easy because that's the road to trusting God. Why did God put treasure in jars or jars of clay or clay pots to show that the almighty power, surpassing power, comes not from us, but from God? And so do you desire a wonderful counselor, a prince of peace, an everlasting father, uh, then God sent in divine weakness Jesus Christ for you. And I wonder if for you, uh, if Christ is still kind of like an unwrapped present under your tree, you're thankful, you, you love Christmas and the message, but maybe you've never really opened up that present and received Christ into your heart, into your life, and let him humble you and show you that his divine weakness is better than all our efforts and all our human power. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this text. We thank you that you have sent in Christ the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, to come at the very place where in Isaiah's time, a terrible tyrant came in, Sennacherib of Assyria. And right there in the Sea of Galilee, it was so dark, it was so gloomy. It was right there that you let divine weakness come in Jesus Christ to shine light in a dark place. We pray you would shine your light and knowledge and the glory of in the face of Jesus Christ in our dark hearts and help us to enjoy this Christmas 2022. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The first Noel the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep noel 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 Born is the King of Israel. They looked up and saw a star 
shining in the east beyond them far and to the earth it gave great light and so it continued both day and night noel 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 born is the king of israel then let us all with one accord sing praises to our heavenly lord that hath made heaven and earth of naught and with his blood mankind hath bought Noel, 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 Noel Born is the King of Israel Noel, 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 Noel Born is the King of Israel Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Born is the King of Kings. Well, thank you all for joining us. Thanks, John, for leading us in song, and thanks, Bob, for sharing um, scripture. I uh, will finish up with a short reading from the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2 when the shepherds uh, uh, were introduced to the angels. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.